The Nimzo Indian defense is one of the best defenses that you can play against d4. It's basically played in any level of chess. So beginners are playing the beautiful Nimzo, uh, feed the masters, intermasters, top grandmasters are using this beautiful defense against d4. In my opinion, if you're really bothered, if you have trouble, maybe to find yourself a lifetime repertoire, the Nimzo Indian defense is perfectly fine. There are cool strategic concepts for black, there are cool also attacking opportunities for white. So it's still, I think, a double edged opening, opening in which also I think black is decent chances to win the game but when we watch this top engine games it's simply a different story many times the nimzo is a positional battle a positional struggle where you basically just fight for one tempo where you fight for one square but when the engines are playing this opening it becomes really a butcher massacre it becomes really a sharp tactical battle and i've prepared such a beautiful game play, uh, play by stock for 15 against its arch enemy lila c0 in a beautiful sharp tactical nimzo in the defense so let's see now the game but before we analyze this a beautiful game i wanted to tell you something because um, i've been asked many times the question here on my youtube channel why uh, don't i cover more uh, of this alpha zero versus stockfish games that are going on now on youtube i've seen now many channels are doing this alpha zero versus stockfish games uh, the big reason behind this is that uh, uh, there are simply no alpha zero chess games anymore the alpha zero project was shut down i'm not sure why everyone is making this kind of up probably because um, they wanted to create some uh, further content or i'm not sure where these games are coming from in my opinion um, they are simply as i said no alpha zero chess games maybe this is a stockfish versus stockfish game in which you name one engine alpha zero i'm not sure what's going on but as i said don't get tricked into it in my opinion as i said there's simply no alpha zero chess game so uh, this has to be mentioned so on my channel you'll not see the really alpha zero games we can maybe analyze the first uh, the earlier games back from 2018 uh, still I think they're really cool alpha zero uh, back in 2018 was simply the best engine but as I said the project was shut down and now there's uh, no alpha zero there's this Leela C0 engine uh, there's also of course the drag engine and uh, also the stockfish engine are now the three best engines in the world stockfish is of course now dominating every tournament that it's playing so let's see now this uh, beautiful game stockfish versus Leela C0 in a beautiful Nimzo Indian defense so we have here d4 by the fish knight to f6 by lila c0 c4 e6 knight to c3 and after bishop to b4 we have the nimzo indian on the board now e3 the normal line kingside casting bishop to d3 we have d5 uh knight to f3 normal development and now after d takes c4 we have now this uh, idea to release the pressure in the center of the board and after bishop to c4 basically uh, black is now three choices in my opinion how to make uh, continuation here c5 is an idea to attack further the center uh, also b6 is a, a decent opportunity with the idea to occupy the e4 square by playing b6 bishop to b7 and then uh, to cement the position around the square e4 or to play a6 with the idea to uh, launch a flank attack with the move b5 and then probably followed with c5 so these are three options in my opinion they're solid options but here lila c0 went into this most aggressive line immediately with the move d uh, with the move c5 and the problem is you can't actually take d takes c5 is not so good for uh white because after queen to d1 king takes d1 bishop to c3 b takes c3 leads now into complicated game for white white has still the bishop pair on the board and has an extra pawn but we should really not evaluate the position like this we have to say these are weak pawns the king is stuck in the center of the board so it's not really the optimal position here for white so that's why uh white doesn't want to have this kind of a setup so here in the continuation uh stock 15 simply castled out of this attack so after c takes d4 we have v takes d4 and notice we have now this isolated d pawn which is many times happening in the queen's gamut except the line so it's now a little bit different but uh, with the same pawn structure now the isolated d pawn has of course its own strategies for white and for black now uh, the main strategy of course for black is to keep the position around the square d5 compact on the other hand uh, white is trying to get the move d5 white wants to break and enter uh, with this move d5 wants simply to open the position wants simply to let the position explode now in the center of the board so it's i think the common idea now for both sides so 
who will stuck to his plan in, my, in a better way will probably uh, win the game. So in the continuation b6, again with the preparation to play bishop to b7 and to cement the position around the square d5. So nothing spectacular so far in the game. Stockfish goes queen to e2, gets out of the attack uh, on the d-file, wants to get the rook behind the pawn because the rook is much, much more powerful than the queen. And then still, of course, we want to play uh, this d5 breakthrough. We want to of course also play the move bishop to g5 because the knight on f6 is also controlling the d5 square. And also what we want to do is to cement our knight here on e5. So Slowly but surely, I think white is building here really beautiful attacking formation. Although, we have to say, it, white has a slight disadvantage with his isolated d pawn uh, that could cause him maybe some, as I said, strategic problems. So, in the continuation, bishop to b7. So, black continues with the plan, rook to d1, white continues also with the plan to advance the pawn to d5. So, we have now bishop takes c3. Interesting idea. This uh, move has been played many, many times in top grandmaster level. It's a beautiful idea because after b takes c3, with a c-file attack with queen to c7 or rook to c8, we will eventually attack the bishop on c4. And notice the queen is sometimes a little bit overloaded to the defense of the knight on f3 and also to the bishop on c4. And also what we can notice here that, uh, okay, White doesn't have maybe the isolated pawn anymore, but has now a new strategic disadvantage. It's, of course, the backward pawn on c3. So in the continuation, we have now queen to c7, and now Stockfish makes a huge decision. Stockfish is saying, okay, I have my weakness, but when you take my pawn on c3, I don't have any weaknesses anymore. You can have your pawn, but uh, Stockfish is simply relying on his beautiful peace activity. Stockfish is hoping to get a beautiful attacking formation. Stockfish never cons pawns, I think. So that's why a beautiful method here. Bishop to d3, sacrificing the pawn. Leela accepts the challenge, hits, of course, also the rook. But now Stockfish comes with the bishop out with a beautiful tempo. And look at this. The queen has to step back. Bishop, very dangerous. This bishop, very dangerous. Knight will eventually come into the game. Maybe afterwards we can also play rook to d3, rook to h3, include the rook into the game. But I think with this simple pawn sacrifice, uh, white has a beautiful activity. The attacking the attack is rolling really really a nice uh, flow here by stockfish 15 notice after queen to c7 stockfish includes a new piece into the game after queen to e7 look at this all of white's pieces are really on almost optimal score we cannot say they're on optimal scores because probably the rooks would love maybe to come on the g file on the h file but in the beginning, I think this is the best that you can get with your pieces and all of the pieces are out and look at this. The knight has problems how to get into the game. Uh, here in the continuation, after move knight to e5, notice that the c6 square is now taken, so the knight cannot be developed on, on c6. And the problem is now if you play knight to d7, rook to c7 uh, is going to happen. Attack uh, will create here attack against the bishop. So the knight has really a tough time. Of course, also knight to a6 is not working because the queen Queen and bishop battery is not allowing here the knight to breathe. So with a simple uh, pawn sacrifice, Stockfish created, I think, already, already great tactical madness all over the board. So here h6 was played by uh, Lila c0. As we said, if knight to d7 happens, rook to c7 is immediately Stockfish continuation. Stockfish occupies simply the powerful 7th rank. So in the continuation, bishop to b1. Very nice move. This uh, move creates, of course, this Capablanca attack. We want to play queen to d3, knight to g4. Maybe deflect the knight somehow from the, the square, uh, from the defense of the h7 square, and maybe even deliver checkmate. In the continuation, we have now this idea, knight to d7. But now Stockfish, as we said, immediately when the queen is disconnected from uh, the seventh rank, is now playing rook to c7, uh, is attacking the bishop, and here Stockfish gains another tempo, which is of course very important in such open tactical battles. So here the continuation, bishop to d5, queen to d3, rook to d8, played by uh, Lila c0, knight to g4, the standard deflection motif. If knight takes g4 happens, then you get destroyed on h7. In the continuation, we have now g6, but this move g6, okay, it solves one problem, but creates now a new problem. It's now the weak pawn on h6. So, as I said, you cannot defend everything against Stolfish. You leave at least somewhere, uh, probably, the weakness in your position. So, knight take, uh, we have here bishop to a3. After queen to e8, now knight takes h6. We have king to g7, and now queen to e3. Uh, you have to now defend the position like this. And Stockfish has now several problems. 
the main issue is how to get the knight back uh, okay we took our pawn the knight is so far protected by the queen on e3 but we have problems how to get the knight on g4 back that's now the main issue in the continuation uh here lila continued with rook from a to c8 which is a normal idea we want to finally get a clarification with this rook on c7 uh, this rook should not be tolerated of course in such an active shape like this in the continuation after move rook to a7 now comes the critical moment here of the game uh, here lila c0 makes a huge mistake with the move queen to h8 and it seems like a logical move because um, you're simply attacking the knight and the knight doesn't have a good score as we said this is the main issue but the way to go was actually here to again challenge the rook and after move something like rook takes a8 a rook takes a8 notice there is at least some kind of an attack against the pawn on a2 now stockfish has to play a wild line with the move g4 uh, in the continuation maybe now queen to h8 is a possibility now bishop to c1 connecting everything and maybe black can defend this position with this idea knight to g8 knight takes g8 and after king to g8 uh, and maybe a3 okay we have defended now we have still this beautiful bishop pair and okay, maybe black has several dodge for problems in front of the king, but this is also, I think, not the optimal position for white, especially because of some weaknesses on life force in front of its own king. So both engines, I think, would have really tough time in this particular position, and my stockfish at home evaluated this position slightly better here for white. So this was the way to go. Maybe here for Lila C0, as we said, again challenging the rook here on a7. But what Lila did was this move, queen to h8, and actually this move loses on spot because Stockfish noticed a beautiful and brutal deflection motif, which you'll understand now in the next couple of moves. So here Stockfish first plays bishop to e7, but the point is actually that here Stockfish doesn't want to get get the rook stockfish is trying to get an overload here against the king the king's a little bit overloaded to the defense of the knight on f6 but it's also overloaded to the defense of the queen if for instance the queen takes the knight on h6 so that's now the main issue for instance if you play here after rook to f8 uh, that lila c0 played if you play now uh, bishop to f8 immediately this is not good. So as I said, Stockfish's plan is not to grab the rook because after bishop to f8, rook to f8, notice that the knight doesn't have a good square. The knight cannot get back on g4. So that's why you have to play something wild like this. Rook to d7. After knight to d7, now the knight can uh, knight can get back. And this is not nothing spectacular. Okay, white has an extra pawn. But again, we have this isolated d pawn. This bishop is very powerful. So in my opinion, uh, okay white has an attacking flow here but i'm not sure if uh, stoffish would win maybe uh, this kind of an endgame so that's why you see after move bishop to f8 nothing spectacular is going on so that's why after move rook to f8 stoffish leaves the rook on f8 he doesn't care about the rook stoffish simply continues the pressure against the rook on c8 and now comes the stunner here lila c0 played queen to h6 Okay, that was Lila C0's move, but let's see also different opportunities. For instance, you play now rook to e8. Now, actually, bishop to f6 is working here. It's, in, it's a different story because after knight to f6, look at this, what happens. Rook to c7, we create now very, very enormous pressure here. And again, if you try something like queen to h6, the problem is, as we said, the king is a little bit overloaded here. After rook to f7, rook takes f7, king takes f7. Uh, uh, here the queen gets deflected from the defense of the queen and the game is over here for black. Very, very wild stuff. So let's go back. Uh, um, you can also play, instead of this move, rook to e8, you can play rook to c1. But again, a similar idea happens. Queen to c1. You have to play against uh, something like this, the queen to h6, bishop to f8. Now the knight has to take, and again, we have the same deflection motif with rook to f7. So this motif is present now in many tactical lines. Basically, black cannot get out of this mess. Even in this scenario, Lila c0 played queen to h6, didn't play rook to e8, didn't play rook to c1. Lila c0 simply played queen to h6, but now again a similar tactic. We have here rook to c8. In the game, uh, rook takes c8 was played. Again, even if you try queen to e3, if you want to first trade off queens, it's not working because first we play the check. You have to now take out with the knight. Now we pick up the piece and uh, here, of course, white is completely winning with his two rooks versus two knights. So it's not working. So as we said, after move rook to c8, uh, here we have rook takes c8. 
Now comes again this idea of bishop to f6. The king is overloaded. We have uh, knight to f6. And again, this beautiful motif. Uh, rook takes f7, getting the king out of the defense of the queen. Now we have to play and after queen to h6. Notice the, the queen is covering the square c1. So no back rank checkmates are possible here for uh, black. Really beautiful tactical calculations here by Stoffer 15. In the game, a bishop to e4 was played. Bishop takes e4 in this position. Uh, Lila c0 resigned. Of course, you can just pick up the knight and now we can create some breathing spaces. You can, of course, play a couple of checks. But I think the main goal is here maybe to create a passer on the age file so with the support of the queen uh this pawn is going to probably get promoted or you probably sacrifice maybe the knight or the rook if you want to stop the further progress here on the age file so pooh, incredible game i really loved uh, this idea in the beginning let's go uh, back to to this attacking theme uh after bishop to c4 so after bishop to c3 Stoffish left now simply the pawn on c3 hanging but then created three attacking chances with this beautiful bishop pair with the rook activity uh, with the heavy artillery on the seventh rank with beautiful tactical motifs deflection decoys uh, double attacks uh, we have seen an overload here really really beautiful tactical elements here by Stoffer 15. so okay i hope that you enjoyed the game i really enjoyed it a lot interesting idea in the uh, nimzo in the defense if you want to see more brutal tactical games like this, check out my coverage of uh, the best chess games played by computers. Here's the link of our playlist. We have more than 400 games. Have fun and analyze really some other cool games. And if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you soon with some more videos and what to say. Chess is the best, of course.